Hello, family. Wow, it's been a crazy week uh, as public schools, universities have closed. Uh, many of churches are closed. Their services for this week. Corporations have directed their employees to stay home and work from home. America and the world are in uncharted waters. But this hadn't caught God off guard. I've been praying this week that God would show me how to lead uh, courageously and what practical things that I could do to honor Him. So I want to give you just some practical things that God has shown me that we can do during this time to bring Christ to a panic world. First, I want to remind you to what you've already know. Worry is not your friend, and panic is not our way. Let me say that again. Worry is not your friend, and panic is not our way. So Solomon said in Proverbs 24.10 that if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. May it never be said of God's people that we're led more by fear than by faith. Corey Ten Boom, who led courageously through the Nazi Holocaust, a different kind of deadly pestilence, said this, worry doesn't enter empty tomorrow of its sorrows, it empties today of its strength. Worry will accomplish nothing except wearing down your heart and your mind. Worry won't change the circumstances or lower your chance of getting an infection or a virus. And Jesus always calls us to prayer and faith. Matthew 6, Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. He said, Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough worry of itself. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Of all people, we are a people that don't need to worry because we know Him who defeated death, hell, and the grave and that has made us more than an overcomer. The most practical and powerful thing that we can do as Christ followers is to pray. Every time an anxious thought or worry tries to overtake your soul, just begin to pray. Some of the things I've been praying for is God's protection over our community, our state, and our nation. Praying for our first responders, the doctors, the nurses, the caregivers, the paramedics that are on the front line. Praying for our government leaders to have wisdom and discernment about the next steps. Praying for our seniors and those that are most vulnerable, our nursing homes, our assisted living facilities, and praying that God would stop this plague in our country. He's done it over and over again in His Word, and just agreeing with the body of Christ that God would stop this plague. Another very practical thing, church, that we could do during this time is to continue to love and serve people. To continue to love and serve people. Don't retreat in fear. Psalm 37.3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Throughout history, Christians and the church have always stood out because 
of their love and service for people in times just like this, in plagues, in epidemics, in time of great need. By stepping out in love, we demonstrate our faith to a watching world. The scriptures say they'll know that we are Christians by our love one for another. And I would encourage you to just ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have us to do? This week, the schools reached out to us and said, could we use Henry Christian Church's parking lot area to be able to distribute food to the children that will be out of school so that they could come up here and be able to receive meals uh, during that time? Well, the answer was an unreserved yes. Look for ways that we can love and serve and help those that are most at risk. And then ask the Lord, Lord, how would you have me to love and serve at this time? What senior could you call and check on? Who's somebody in the community that has been adversely affected that you could call and pray for? At work this week, we reached out to all of our project managers and we told them since we serve mainly healthcare facilities, the stress that the hospitals and the staff are under at this time are unprecedented. We ask our project managers, you call each one of our clients and express your love and care and concern for them that you can't imagine what they're under and ask them how we can help them. Ask them how we can serve and come alongside them as their partner. And finally, as a watching world reacts to this crisis, I want to remind you, it's a reminder that everything on this earth is temporary, that you and I are just passing through, and you and I have got to be ready to share the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 3.15 says, Always be prepared to give an answer for the reason of the hope that you have. You can share how Jesus rescued you from the epidemic of sin and the penalty of death. You can share your hope is not found in this world and that you are able to face your final day, whenever that may be, with confidence because of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful, church, that we have nothing to fear, not the coronavirus, not the Ebola virus, or any disease. And family, I want to encourage you to press on, to walk with faith and not worry, to pray about everything, to continue to love and to serve and to be ready to give an answer. Jesus is Lord, and it's the best day. The best day of the church is yet to come. I love you. I want to encourage you that we're going to be sending out short emails, short video clips throughout the week as just reminders, as short devotions to encourage you, to strengthen you, and help you. And our president has declared tomorrow, Sunday, March 15th, as a national day of prayer. I'll be joining you again for a time of prayer that we'll be distributing tomorrow. I'd encourage you to call your family in for your family to pray together. If your neighbors are able to come, invite them to come as well. We want you to know we love you and we're praying for you, church. God bless you.